Good happy Sunday morning. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. And Merry Christmas, everyone. Let's get started with your news. We have lots of news to get to. First up, Manchester Police donate to victim of life savings the theft ID suspect. Let's take a listen to the video from WME Warren News 9. Take advantage of our season's best offers on the 2017 X25 Luxury Lease for $4.29 a month. Technology and style. From our family to yours, season's best. It has been quite the couple of days for the manager of this Dunkin' Donuts. Friday, her purse and life savings are stolen, and Saturday became the Christmas Eve she'll never forget. $500 in gift cards, and also a check for $1,000 for you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. An emotional surprise for Rebecca St. Laurent. Friday, her purse containing her life savings was stolen while she was at work. I saw the... Um, the news article today on the news this morning, and I felt that that was what we needed to do. Ron Chamberlain, president of the Manchester Police Patrolmen's Association, says they pick a family in need every holiday season. The hospital security officer told St. Laurent police had more questions about the case and led her to the lobby, where more than a dozen officers were ready to greet her with their donation. This is just oh, it's overwhelming, and people should know that they really they care about this community. Police released this surveillance photo of the woman believed to have taken the purse. It was found dumped in a trash can near the emergency room. Cash and other irreplaceable items gone. I have a picture of my son when he was in daycare, and I had to work. And so I would keep it in my wallet so I would know, you know, this is why you're working. Police say this is just another way they can give back and feel they made the right choice donating to St. Laurent's family when they found out today her husband had donated their last $30 to charity. Even for someone that had a huge loss like they had, they still had that Christmas spirit to, to give to someone else. To just know that there are people out there that care is wonderful. Anyone with information about the suspect in this case is asked to contact Manchester Police. In Manchester, Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Manchester Police alleged theft suspect swims across Merrimack River. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. The 2017 X25 Luxury Lease for 429 dollars Technology and style from our family to yours. Season's best. A shoplifting suspect made an ambitious escape attempt last night that included a swim across the frigid Merrimack River and almost two miles on the run. But Manchester police were still able to catch up to him. The Merrimack River in Manchester isn't the best place for a swim, especially in December. So when a shoplifting suspect at the Bedford Coles fled from police in the direction of these frigid waters, first responders on the other side knew they might have to make a rescue. Yeah, it's pretty sizable and the river is up uh, because of the weather as of recent and of obviously the temperature. Um, so we could have had a medical issue as well as a safety issue on top of that. But as they launched their search, a call came in from a neighbor on Dunbar Street who said a man had just climbed up from the riverbank and trudged off through the snow toward Heard Street and downtown Manchester. A passerby observed this male subject soaking wet running northbound on the train tracks. The suspect, 22-year-old Timothy Winslow of Manchester, not only survived his plunge, he was on the move. He made it another mile on foot before being spotted behind the Manchester Music Mill. An officer patrolling near Elm Street located a subject hiding behind a building. Uh, upon being discovered, the subject fled on foot. The officer gave chase. Uh, a short time later, located the uh, suspect uh, who's soaking wet. Um, he admitted to being the subject that we were looking that uh, we were looking for. Police booked Winslow on a charge of resisting arrest and released him on personal recognizance bail to Bedford PD. Finishing the night in handcuffs, certainly a better outcome 
than never making it out of the Merrimack. Winslow is due in court on the resisting arrest charge on January 31st. Okay, and there you go on that report. Christmas morning fire erupts in North End. Firefighters are currently battling a five alarm fire in Boston's North End. The flames broke out early on this Christmas morning at an apartment building at 52 Hall Street, housing six people. The heavy flames have been put out, according to the Boston Fire Department. But crews are still searching for dangerous hot spots. One firefighter was taken to the hospital with an arm injury. His condition at this time is unknown. Stay tuned with the Riley King Network with more details. Trump says he'll discover foundation to avoid appearance of conflict. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. Hold on, everyone. Sorry about that. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, and there you go on that report. No apparent survivors in deadly Russian plane crash. Let's take a listen to this video from CNN. Matthew, what are you hearing? And talk more about uh, the entertainers, uh, a famous troupe um, that was that were on this plane. Yeah, they're called the uh, the Red Army Choir, the Alexandrov Ensemble, in fact, and it's the official choir of the of the Russian Armed Forces. They they perform all around the country, and, and actually they, they perform internationally as well. And they were on their way, uh, we understand, uh, to Syria. Uh, to stage a New Year's concert uh, for the Russian forces uh, that are in Lakakia, where there's a, a big Russian airbase in which Russia has been carrying out airstrikes in support of its Syrian ally Bashar al-Assad. Uh, when the the plane went down, it's it's you know it's 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 pretty shocking actually because this is the kind of plane that, as you mentioned, um, me and my crew have been on uh, several times, and other people from CNN as well. It's 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 kind of like a it's like one five four is an old passenger plane 
uh, which is basically out of service in, in, in civilian use, in civilian companies. But the Russian Defense Ministry and, and others around the world still use them. Um, they're, they're extremely robust. They were the work, workhorse of the, of the Soviet Union in terms of passenger aircraft. And the, the one or two uh, uh, planes that I've been on uh, in recent years uh, with the Defense Ministry uh, have been you know, old planes from the 1970s or 80s, um, but they've been refitted in size, and so they look quite quite nice inside. And, and you know, they're for VIP transport. These, these, these aren't what they shuttle you know, ordinary troops around with. And, and you can see from the passenger uh, list, well, we haven't got the passengers, but the kind of people on board, that, that that's, that's exactly what this was. Uh, the orchestra, of course, the choir, rather. Uh, the, uh, there were journalists on board as well who had undoubtedly been called by the defense ministry uh, to, to to come on board that plane and to and to um report on the on the concert that was going to be given by the red army choir i mean that's what normally happens uh they they give you a call uh they they say look we're leaving tomorrow morning uh, come to the airport in moscow we'll get you on the plane and you go off to syria with them it's happened numerous times and it could easily have been i don't know what journalists were involved in this trip but the defense ministry decides themselves which which, which organizations to call, you know, they call them and then you, you arrive the next day at the airport and, and you go off to Syria with them. And so um, we'll wait to see, you know, which which uh, news organization um, were called on this occasion. I expect it's probably, it's probably Russian news organizations for an event like this. But, you know, we'll do some research on that. Uh, Matthew, is, is there any more information about how uh, long this airplane flew uh, before it disappeared or if there was any uh, sign of weather or any distress calls? Well, I, I understand. I mean, the details are a bit sketchy yet, but I understand the plane took off as usual from, from Moscow. There's a military airport outside of Moscow where these, these planes operate from. Um, it flew to Sochi, first of all, which is in southern Russia. It's on the coast of the Black Sea, and that's about a two-hour flight. And so uh, apparently it stopped there to, to, uh, to refuel. It may have picked up some extra passengers or dropped some people off as well. And then apparently it disappeared from radar about 20 minutes after taking off from Sochi. So it was it really just taken off and it was it was apparently just over the Black Sea where um, fragments of the aircraft have now been located according to uh, Russian media quoting the Russian Defense uh, Ministry. Um, the weather uh, was um, uh, was fine apparently. There's, there's, there's no indication that there was a weather reason uh, for this. And of course, these planes are fully equipped to, to fly in, in bad weather. Um, but, you know, we'll see what, what clarity comes to us in the minutes and in the hours ahead. Okay, and there you go on that report. And now let's take a look at your event calendar for today and see what events are happening today. And we have one event happening today, Christmas dinner at 3 p.m. in Jackson. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas, everyone, and a wonderful day. Goodbye.